Corvette Hop, and you can guess why they call me that name. We now have over 10,000 subscribers and 2 million views. That would not be happening if it wasn't for you, so thank you so much. Today we're going to build a concrete slab, 4 foot by 2 foot, on the back of this workshop for this Mr. Cool air compressor unit. With that, let's go ahead and get started. One of the first thing I'm going to do is cut four pieces of 2 by 4 Two of the pieces are going to be two feet, three inches, and the other two are going to be four feet long. Next, I'm going to attach them together using three inch screws to make a four foot by two foot inside diameter. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the rebar to fit inside the 4 by 2 box. Now with the concrete mix that I'm using, that is not necessarily required, but I'm going to use it anyways because I know good and well that the compressor unit that's going to sit on this slab is pretty heavy. So I simply cut three long pieces to fit in the box and four short pieces and I attach them with wire ties. Now you may ask, why did I use wire ties to connect a rebar? Well, simply it's just easy to use. Plus I don't cut or poke my fingers using sharp wire while connecting the rebar together. I simply make sure that each joint where the rebar crosses, that I use a wire tie. This helps make it sturdy. Once I pour the concrete, this will help to prevent the concrete from cracking. Next I'll go ahead and cut the end of the wire ties just to make sure there's nothing sticking up to prevent the possibility of it sticking out of the concrete once it's poured. I use a Quick Creek Pro Finish Crack Resistant Concrete Mix. This is a great product. You don't have to use any rebar. About one and a half gallons of water per bag, 80 pound bags. Now of course I use rebar anyways. The cost is about six dollars per bag. Well the air conditioning unit is going to be installed right here on the inside. I'm going to have the lines come out down the wall. Therefore I need my pad about right here in this location right here. It's going to be a four by two concrete pad right there. One of the first things I need to do is clear the area for the concrete slab. Next, go ahead and sit down the frame that we built earlier onto the ground. Go ahead and mark the inside diameter of the frame. Next, dig out a couple inches for your foundation. Once that is done, go ahead and reinstall the frame back in the same place. Here we go. Now we're just going to set this up to level it. Note I'm looking at the level to see how far the frame needs to go up and be secured. Again, make sure the concrete frame is level. Once that is done, you can go ahead and move to the next step. The next step is to install gravel onto the foundation. Now I used two 50 pound bags of gravel to ensure that I had drainage for the foundation. I got the all purpose gravel from Lowe's for about $5 per bag. Once the gravel was laid down, I had the twins go ahead and pack it down and make it as level as possible. Now clearly, they had a good time and just wanted to help out. Plus, it looks like it increased their dancing skills. Now it's time to mix the 80 pound bag of concrete with one and a half gallons of water. I was lucky enough that the neighbor actually had a mixer that I could use. I simply put the mix in the mixer, added one and a half gallons of water, and once that was done, I could turn it on. 
At first I used one bag of mix, but quickly figured out I could actually put two to three bags of mix in the mixer. But I wanted to make sure that I didn't overuse it and have a lot left over. Once mixed, I can pour it in and start forming the concrete slab. Now that I have about half of the concrete poured, we remember when we put together the rebar to go inside the concrete frame? Well, now it's time to go ahead and install that. The beauty is it just lays right into the concrete frame. Next, continue to mix and pour the rest of the concrete. Because I can only put the concrete mixer in one place, I had to continually spread the concrete mix around in the box so that I get it evenly applied. Now that I have enough concrete forming the concrete slab, I use a 2x4 in a sawing motion back and forth to even out the concrete and give it a nice finish. Now I must admit this took a little bit of time and patience but continue to work it back and forth in that sawing motion so that you get the finish that you want. Don't be afraid to add a little water if you need to. Now this came out pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use a trowel to just add a little bit more finish and smoothness to it. Just be careful with the trowel. I did poke it into the concrete a little bit and had to redo some parts. And I also did apply a little bit more water. But I think you'll agree it came out pretty good. Now once it dried for about an hour and a half, I made a template for the air compressor to, that will sit on top. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to poke the studs that the air compressor will mount to into the concrete without well, having to worry about that old tiresome drilling with a masonry bit. I simply tap them in and it will be just done just like that. Here's another key point. I wanted to make sure that the Mr. Cool air conditioner compressor set on the concrete slab at least 12 inches from the wall. In my case I went ahead and made it 19 inches. Now in many states it is by code to be at least 12 inches. However, I set mine by 19 inches, like I mentioned before, just so I get enough air ventilation all around the compressor unit. I did put a little bit of tape on top of the stud mount that goes into the concrete, just so to make sure I don't put it in too much, so that I still have enough thread to mount the compressor. I simply made sure I put all bolt studs into the concrete. Once that was done, I can simply remove the mold that I made and then voila, mission accomplished. Now this saved me a whole lot of work compared to when it was solid and dry and having to drill into the concrete with a masonry bit. Love the results. Now that it has been about 24 hours, we can go ahead and remove the frame from the concrete slab. Simply use my electric screwdriver to remove some of the screws, remove some of the mounting around the side, and bust it loose. Now believe it or not the frame comes apart really easy and doesn't really attach. Not a whole lot of force is required. I simply push it aside and now I'm ready to mount that Mr. Cool Air Compressor. I went ahead and installed the rubber grommets that Mr. Cool sent me. Now the better half agreed to help me install the air compressor onto the concrete slab. This part is almost impossible for a single person to do all by him or herself. So a big shout out to the better half. Next I'm just making sure it's all securely mounted and next I'll go ahead and put on the nuts to the bolts to make sure that it's fastened to the concrete slab. Once all secure, this portion of the project is complete. Cool. Well clearly the Mr. Cool Air Compressor is mounted on the concrete slab. Here are some key points. This job took about five hours to complete. Obviously it would have took longer if I didn't have the concrete mixer from a neighbor next door. Give yourself a little bit extra time for the concrete to dry. In addition, think about when you put the studs into the concrete that you allow a little bit of extra thread to crude out so that the compressor can mount on top. Also, 
if needed, make sure you set your concrete pad at least 12 inches from the exterior wall to allow for circulation to move around the unit that you're going to set on top of the concrete pad. With that, if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe and leave some comments. See you soon.